Beth Deloria and I am a marathon runner running with a little bit of a challenge and that I have foot drop, which is um, paralysis of my ankle, um, inability to lift it. And I'm here with Dr. Carl Fields today who has been instrumental in helping me um, get as close to a normal running gait as I had before I had my injuries. And so today we're going to be talking about the considerations that Dr. Fields took in figuring out how to get me back up and running with, with the brace. So with that, um, we are using Allard's products and a little bit about these products. They make three different types. It's a it's a dynamic response AFO. There's a very flexible version called the Ypsilon to consider. There was the um, medium um, flexibility and support version called the toe-off. And then the very supportive, a little bit more rigid version um, called the Blue Rocker. So these were the three options that we had when um, figuring out what was going to work best for me. So what, what did you take into consideration? Well, the first thing we had to do a good evaluation to see, one, uh, what was your medical condition? How weak was that foot? Did you have any push off to start with? So that's going to determine the amount of support and sort of function you need from the brace. Secondly was your weight and size. I mean, is there anything about you that would require you to have some unique sort of changes to your support that you need? Not only the brace, but other things that we might try. Uh, third was things like your leg length. Were they absolutely equal? Did that require some difference in brace? Fourth was strength. Did you have enough strength to have uh, normal stability in one type of brace versus another? And someone with very, very profound weakness that went above the ankle or foot might require a different type of brace than you would. But our goal in all this was to make sure you ran with as normal a form as we possibly could so really what I'm looking at, I want that left leg, this brace, to look just like the right leg when you're with your running form. So in regards to the three options that we tried, um, how did you settle on the one that I'm using, which is the toe off? Well, your normal gait, and I had to, I could estimate this pretty much by seeing how you really strike with your right leg and right foot. It's more on the forefoot, more to the outside of the forefoot, pretty high push off. So you get a pretty good lift when you're running. You're not a heel striker or anything like that. So when we first went to the most flexible of the braces, the Epsilon, you were actually getting a little bit too much spring in that leg. So it was giving you too much hip flexion. Yeah, and I remember not only that, but the strut was so flexible, it was, it was pressing into my shin, and, and that made for a very uncomfortable run. So that was probably showing that you were getting too much motion in this area. Mm -hmm. When we went to kind of the medium flexibility brace, the toe off, you know, right away, I mean, in your walking gait, I couldn't tell a difference. And then when we put you in your running gait, we did have to make some adjustments, but it looked like the form was pretty close to normal. And then as far as the blue rocker, the most supportive of the braces, I just didn't think at your size and weight that, this, that you were going to really flex this the way you need to to have it function normally. Correct. And for me, I feel like as a runner, you want as much flexibility and mobility as possible, freedom of motion. Um, and this one actually was a little bit too much control for me. And, that, and, and that's a good point because we were looking at you as a runner, whereas if I were looking at a walker or someone who's working a job all the time, my goals might be a little bit different. Correct. So then once we figured out the brace, what's the next thing we do? The next thing we did for you was to see, once we put the brace on, was there any sort of abnormality in the way you were landing or other things with that? And we noticed some changes. I mean, there was a little bit of a leg length difference. Uh, you had learned to compensate by really lifting this hip too high on the affected side. Uh, and you had some weakness that was very specific to that hip area. So one, we had to make some adjustments for that leg length inequality and also an adjustment for your foot placement on that left side because the weakness actually had you landing even too much to the outside of that. So we did some orthotic adjustments in your shoes to try to neutralize that. Right, I do remember that I had specific pain as my foot was rolling to the strut and I was having knee and hip pain that I was very concerned about if I was gonna be able to go forward with running. So uh, speaking to that, um, you basically customized the brace by creating a custom insert. What, what types of things did you do to the insert itself? Well, one of the key things I did was try to put 
you in a position where when I put you in the insert that your foot was in what we call a neutral position. Subtalar neutral is, uh, refers to how the bones are aligned so that the foot is in a neutral position. So we customized that insert so that it puts you in a neutral position. Because you land in supination, that meant we had to do some medial, what we call posting or cushioning for that. We added just a little bit of a lift to that so that it would equalize the leg length difference. And then as far as, um, I remember we, I tried it, came back to you, and I was still having a little bit of an issue maybe with some shin pressure. And I think you adjusted where the brace was in the shoe. Right. And, and that's the other point is, you know, when we make an orthotic for you, you may actually, to make it fit comfortably with the brace, you might have even had to go up a half size in shoe, a lot of people do, mm -hmm. or make some adjustment that way, or go to a slightly different type of shoe. So when we found one that would fit so that the shoe did not push the position of the strut in the wrong place, and that we adjusted the position where it's sitting in the shoe, also with the orthotic comfortably fitting in the shoe, then we could get it to where it wasn't putting too much pressure on you. Right, and I think that was an important point to make is that I was in the right brace, or so we thought at this point, and the, the orthotic was putting me at neutral, everything else was working, but I was still getting a little bit of pressure, and so just by making that slight adjustment of pushing me forward, because walking I was fine, running is where I felt the pressure, so over time that was the only thing I was going to be able to give you the feedback on. Right, and, and I have to make, for running, I'm really trying to adjust so that your ankle position is at about 10 degrees of dorsiflexion, because mm -hmm. that's how you push off in running. In walking, I would want that much more neutral. Right. So just having you walk in it is not sufficient. I had to see you run in it, and then really we're into trial and error, because right. we've got to see, does it hold up when you're just starting your run? What about when you get fatigued? In a marathon, you're going to change your form some when you get fatigued. So is it still in a good supportive position? And then we keep making tweaks because once we get you into this, once we get your hip strength back to normal, maybe your form's going to change a little bit. So that will require some adjustment to either the orthotic, the position of the brace, the position of the brace in the shoe. Then the final adjustment that we ended up making, and I'll just use this as an example, um, uh, where we built up the insert, all of a sudden I was having um, less room as it, the strut hit my ankle and it, I didn't have enough clearance. And so what we ended up doing was instead, even though the small brace fit me, we had to go up to a medium so that this cleared the insert a little bit better. We trimmed the, the foot plate, the floor plate, and then we trimmed the top down. So we actually customized the brace even further for my purposes. So I'm running in a medium now versus the small, which we had started out with. And if you remember, I think because that foot was a bit weaker too, after we made the adjustments so your form looked really good, you started getting some forefoot pain. Yes. So we actually had to go into your orthotics and add what's called a metatarsal pad to give you more support of that transverse arch that's in the forefoot because it had some collapse in it from the weakness over time. Correct. So after all those visits to your office, um, which really didn't really take that long, but you know, I did have to try everything out. I mean, really since then, since we did the, um, the last adjustment in the size of the brace and the metatarsal pad, I've had zero pain. I've had zero hip pain, zero knee pain, zero foot pain, zero back pain. So whatever we're doing, it's working, which brings me a little bit to the technology of the brace itself, the science behind it. What, what have you noticed about that and why it seems to be working so well for me? Well, this is really, really a great advance for someone like myself who works with people who are trying to overcome some sort of weakness in one extremity or other a foot drop like you have. Because one, the materials are very lightweight. So that doesn't make you feel like that leg fatigues so much faster. Two, the way the materials flex, your push off, and I mean, you know, we videoed you and showed your videos at different things. Your running form looks virtually normal on that left leg, even though it's braced. So the brace is acting like it's pushing off in the same fashion that your leg would. So that flexibility is a fantastic sort of adaptation that we've been able to make with that. And then the third thing, if you remember the way that AFO braces were done in the past, they ran down the back of the leg and they fixed the foot and ankle so that they didn't flex. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what that's going to do? That means those muscles aren't working the way they normally do. So the leg gets weaker over time. So over time, I think the gait actually deteriorated in the older style brace. This brace allows you to run in a much more physiologically normal way of running. Right, and, and just in case in point is I was in the old one, as you knew, for two years, and I was not successfully running. And, and so when I switched to this one, it was great. So um, as far as 
after you did the fitting and, and you, you spoke a little bit about my imbalances, I remember you gave me a lot of exercises that were important for me to do. You talked about strength and flexibility. What types of things, um, once you get the fit right, and as you said, it's not a one-time process, what else needs to happen outside of that? Well, if physicians are going to work with athletes or even patients who have some medical condition to fit them with these braces, it's got to be a partnership because almost anyone who's had any weakness in one extremity or a foot drop or other things has developed weaknesses in another part of their body. For runners, the key of the core, we think core a lot of times is your abs and your low back, but the runner's core is their pelvis. We've got to keep that pelvis level. We've got to keep your hip abduction strong. We've got to keep your hip rotation strong so that when you land on that one leg, because running is a series of jumps through the air, it doesn't wobble. You don't shift side to side. You don't get what we call a Trendelenburg. With you having a short leg, you tend to lean toward that short side. So you were getting more stress on your hip, more injury to that side. We have to correct that mechanically with the bracing, but we also have to correct it with your muscle strength. So we have to get you to your ideal strength to support normal biomechanics in a normal gait. And so that brings me um, sort of in conclusion, um, you've got me successfully up and running 22 half marathons this year without injury, without pain. Um, what does that mean? If we can do that for somebody at my level of activity and all the partnership you say between your patients and um, with what you're giving them in technology, what does that mean for people that are not athletes, your other patients? Well, the approach to bracing is going to be different. For a lot of people, I want to get them to where they can walk with the most normal gait possible. Now, what we know of the science is that if your biomechanics are good, if your gait is more normal, you're using less energy to do the same amount of work. So you're going to go through that day not as fatigued. You're going to feel like you can do more. You're going to have less pain with these things. So the science does support that type of activity. I was thinking of the last person I braced and this has weakness not just at the foot but starting from the hip all the way down their leg. So that's a little different brace. We use the, the more stable of the braces. I used a blue rocker on that person because it gave them more stability but we may even have to adjust it to incorporate some of the upper leg. And what's my goal? My goal is so that person can walk, stand comfortably all through the day and do all the activities of daily living that they would normally do and not feel that they are burdened a lot more than the average person would be. So it's a matter of just restoring a, a quality of life. Um, for me it was running, but for the rest of your patients the gamut probably... Well, quality of life for you, we wanted to get you down to where you weren't getting injured very often and able to run, you're running a lot. <laughs> and surprisingly a lot less injuries than the average runner would have even though you're running with a foot drop. But for a lot of other people, if we can make it so that they can work their jobs full time, that they can lead a comfortable life, that they can get up steps in their house and other things like that. That to me is the victory that you're trying to get to. So one thing I can't stress enough is that this is a partnership between the medical professionals the people who are providing the technology, and then the patient themselves. And so from my point of view as a runner, what I would like to now do is tell you a little bit more about what I personally did to make the brace work more successfully for me. The various points that Dr. Fields has gone over are overall gait assessment, determining the patient's goals, whether they want to run, whether they want to hike, whether they just care about being up and about for their daily job, selecting the proper AFO, which out of the Allard braces in this case um, is the proper one based on how much rigidity and support we need. Once you've selected the proper AFO, we need to select the proper size, anywhere from extra small to extra large. Um, again, these are customizable, so you could size up and trim down, which is what we did in my case. Determining optimal location within the shoe which is just the placement of the AFO, trying to figure out how far forward or back it needs to go during the fitting and the subsequent motion of what the patient is trying to do. For me, running, so it needed to be further up in the shoe to be posted forward. Um, then determining a custom orthotic. In some cases, a custom orthotic insert will not be necessary. Um, in, in many cases though, it's absolutely critical in making sure that the um, stressors are taken off 
the critical point of the brace where the strut meets the foot plate. I'm also just balancing the patients. And then finally, um, the medical professional's consideration to look at would be accounting for any strength or flexibility imbalances within the patient. So that pretty much sums up what Dr. Fields has talked about, which brings us to the patient's considerations. In my case, um, which is really what I can only talk about, um, it's proper running form because that's what I was asking my toe off to do, to help me run. So in that sense, learning what proper running form is by a qualified professional, which is education, learning about it, and then doing stride work drills and exercises in order to train your body to do this. Then there are strength and flexibility corrections based on what Dr. Fields told me. I had several imbalances um, and in, both in strength and in the level of flexibility I had. So he gave me um, lists of exercises that I need to do regularly. And that is a very, very important component of being able to successfully run with a toe off or a dynamic response AFO. And then the third thing that the, the patient has to do is provide detailed feedback throughout the entire training process. As you get stronger and more comfortable using the brace, your muscle capabilities will change, your flexibility hopefully will change for the better, um, your, your form will get tweaked and become more in line with what is proper running form. And with all of those little changes, you're gonna notice changes in how the AFO fits you. And so that is a partnership between the medical professional and the patient that is also a very key component in the process. So that brings me to what proper running form is. And this slide shows you um, the ideal proper running form where you have a straight upper body, you're leaned slightly forward, but most all of your center of gravity is centered over your knee upon foot strike. And in foot strike, you should actually be landing more on the forefoot to midfoot, never on the heel. And here's a side-by-side -side comparison of what efficient or proper running form is versus the inefficient running form. And you can see with the runner on the left, the weight is centered over his knees, hips, and torso. He is striking forward to midfoot, which eases the stress not only on the joints, but would also ease the stress on an AFO or he wearing one. And then the compact motion conserves energy for um, whether you're running shorter distances or longer distances, um, it's gonna inevitably make you a more efficient, faster runner. With the heel strike, you can see it causes a chain of stress starting at the ankle, to the knee, to the hip, and this causes a lot of instability, both left and right motion and lost energy. So once you've taken into consideration the medical professional's um, initial take, and then you work on your, as a patient, you work on what you need to do as far as correcting imbalances, there are some other considerations that come into play, and these I've learned from talking to a lot of other people who are getting back up and with the help of these dynamic AFOs. And these things that we've all found helpful, compression socks that help reduce the friction between the brace and your shin, um, a soft kit, and for a lot of people this is perfectly fine as a liner in between your shin and the brace. For me I needed a little bit more, um, and it's a, called a comfort kit, which is more like a memory foam. So I needed a little bit more protection on that shin. Um, so that's something that you'd want to consider. Other people have opted for neoprene wraps or sleeves on their legs. These are off the shelf items and you can get them in almost any running or sporting goods store. Other um, relief that people have found from any type of friction or pain on the shin has been topical pain relief gel. At this point, I'd really like to thank all the professionals from the side of the orthotists and prosthetists, but also the people who are working on the technology side of it, because I've been so encouraged and overwhelmed by the amount of people I've seen out on the road joining me. Um, these partnerships and the conversations we're having are leading to success all across the world with, with athletes of all levels. And so again, I'd really like to thank you for your participation and playing your role in getting people back up.